Okay, and we are live. ¿Qué tal, amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with this evening's live stream. It is 7.30 p.m. on the 19th of November. And uh, as we normally do in these live streams, we'll have a look at some of the news that has caught my attention today in the press. Yesterday in the press also, some uh, comments that have been left on the channel recently also. And uh, in the second half of this evening's live stream, we'll go into the chat section, which I have here on my screen, and uh, see what's happening in that chat section, see what people are talking about today in the chat section. And if you're watching the live stream, say hello in that chat section. Now, straight into the news. And uh, as you guys know, we've got a new government in Spain a new Sanchez-led government and uh, the new government's challenges in a climate of political tension from dealing with amnesty to lowering the deficit and youth unemployment. Now that the investiture is over and while awaiting the details of the new Council of Ministers, it is time to get to work. The fact is that Pedro Sanchez faces a legislature full of challenges ranging from economic to territorial and social issues in which the international agenda will continue to be very present. At the same time, the president of the government will have to deal with the current climate of political tension and sweat it out to push through any parliamentary procedure as he has little margin for error. So there we go, Mr. Sanchez, little margin for error. And we are waiting to see who the uh, ministers are that Mr. Sanchez chooses. He'll go through a list and go tick, 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 tick. The people that uh, he thinks uh, will do the best job and also people that have been loyal to him. And uh, there might be a few surprises as well, because as you know, to become a minister here in Spain, you don't have to be a politician. You can be plucked out of the general population if the uh, president of the government or prime minister thinks that you have something to offer. For example, the current, uh, I think, science minister is a former astronaut, wasn't a politician, but now is a minister. Now, uh, some people are not happy with the new Sanchez government. And as we can see here, the biggest protest in Spain yet against the Catalan amnesty law draws 170,000. About 170,000 people marched through Madrid on Saturday in the largest protest yet against an amnesty law which Spain's socialists agreed over Catalonia's 2017 separatist bid in order to form a government. Protesters, many waving Spanish flags and holding signs that read Sanchez traitor and don't sell Spain, demonstrated against the law which four judicial associations, opposition political parties, and business leaders said threatens the rule of law and the separation of powers. So 170,000 people turned out. That's uh, what the government is saying turned out. The uh, government delegation in Madrid, which is run by the central government, 170,000. Organizers, uh, organizers are saying close to a million. So uh, a big difference between 170,000 and a million. And uh, this is the view uh, from a building yesterday that was on Twitter that the Partido Popular shared on their Twitter account or X account. And we can see that that central part of the city there, that is the Cebeles uh, monument, bang smack in the center of the city. And uh, behind it is the military headquarters, the army's general headquarters. Uh, no one in there, but the streets completely full. So I don't know how many people were there, 170,000. 200, half a million, a million, no idea, but a lot of people out yesterday uh, protesting against the uh, new government and uh, some of the decisions that it has taken. And uh, another group of people that are not happy are uh, former military officers. And as we can see here, retired military officers call on the army to remove Sanchez from office and call for elections. Retired military personnel have drawn up a manifesto in which they call on the armed forces to dismiss the president, Pedro Sanchez, and to call for new elections in view of uh of the, in their opinion, the absence of justice, equality and democracy in Spain. The manifesto, published on the website of the Spanish Military Association, was made public on Friday after Pedro Sánchez took office. The signatories justify their pe petition with Article 8.1 of the Constitution, which in relation to the armed forces has the mission to defend the constitutional order, which they see in grave danger due to the lack of judicial 
independence. So uh, there we go. The military calling for the removal of Sanchez. They want the army to uh, uh, rise up against the current prime minister and uh, bring this government down, which, uh, as we uh, saw back in, I think it was 1981 or 1982, they tried to do something similar, did the army, uh, weren't successful. And I don't really think that these uh, former officers will get much traction with this, I don't think. But uh, you never know, because uh, coups are uh, common in, um, in some countries. But I don't know whether Spain will go down that path. So I wouldn't be holding your breath waiting for that to happen anytime soon, because they also uh, called for the same thing back in 2019, and uh, nothing happened. And the final piece of news, and uh, some good news for wine lovers, myself included, and it is that the best Spanish red wines for Christmas for less than 10 euros are these ones, according to the OCU, which is the consumer organization, or the consumer, I should say, uh, association in Spain. Interest in wine is increasing in the last months of the year. With just over a month to go until Christmas, many consumers are already thinking about the menu and the drinks they want to offer at home on these very special dates. Dates Faced with the endless options available in supermarkets, the OCU has unveiled some good alternatives at affordable prices. The three OCU recommendations are Prado Rey Origin or Origen 2021, Marques de Cáceres Crianza 2019, and Viñas del Vero Crianza 2019. All of them are available in supermarkets from uh, ranging from six euros seventy eight cents to eight euros forty five cents. So there we go. If you want to pick yourself up a bottle of wine for Christmas, or maybe if you want to knock it off before Christmas, why not? These are the ones that. Uh, the uh, organization here, the OCU, is uh, recommending. And I will say that the uh, Marques de Cáceres Crianza, uh, for the price, around seven sixty, I think, at my local supermarket, is uh, a bargain, in my opinion, for that price, because that's a brand where you uh, pull the cork out and you're almost guaranteed to get a drinkable wine for a decent price. So uh, check it out. And the other ones that they uh, had here, Prado Rey Origen 2021, and the uh, Viñas del Vero, Crianza 2019. So if you see those in your local supermarket, pick one up if you like wine and give it a try. Red wine, that is. Now into the comment section, I'm going to go. First one here from Philip. Have you covered the riots in Madrid? Well, I've spoken about some disturbances. I think we mentioned it last week here on the channel that there are, uh, there's a small group of people, people are protesting every day outside the uh, political party headquarters there in uh, central, central Madrid, but uh, only a handful of radicals, I believe. I think yesterday six people were arrested, and probably in total over the last 10 days or so, uh, don't quote me on this figure, but uh, probably around uh, between six and 10 people a night arrested for uh, various things. I wouldn't really call it rioting, uh, which uh, somebody, or, or which this person said, riots. Uh, it's just a few people burning bins and uh, maybe uh, smashing some uh, car rear vision mirrors or the side mirrors, sorry, on uh, cars as they go by, or maybe uh, breaking a bus stop or something like that. But apart from that, nothing really. And we saw that uh, the uh, masses that hit the streets yesterday, fairly calm, I think. Uh, but then when they go on, uh, when the uh, sun goes down and the uh, bad boys come out to play. And let's be honest, they're thugs uh, that would be at football games doing exactly the same thing on a Saturday night or a Sunday afternoon at their local football team. But now they've got a political reason to do it, and they're being stirred up by certain politicians. We won't mention any names. Another one here from uh, Dundrum. Uh, the UK left the union. The EU Commission better uphold the 90-day rule. Otherwise, any other non-European country could claim racism. Uh, when you leave the club, you're out. No back door. Entry, sorry. I don't know whether racism is the right word here. Maybe some type of uh, discrimination, but racism, I don't think so. And, uh, yeah... A valid point. What about the rest of the world that has to adhere to the 90-day rule? Don't know. But I think that uh, uh, given uh, uh, the United Kingdom's geographical location and uh, also the history that they've had with the European Union and uh, the amount of investment that people have made in the European Union from uh, the United Kingdom, there could be some changes to the rules. But uh, nothing official. It's not easy to do. 
But uh, we saw the other day that France is on board, Spain is on board, so maybe those two countries together can uh, make some changes. Don't know. We will see. Another one here. We saw that one from 123 Sean Away. Regular contributor is 123. No matter what the difference is, it's unacceptable for democratically elected politicians to be attacked like that, especially with the price of eggs. Good point. Eggs are not cheap. Why uh, waste them throwing them at politicians? And uh, yeah, I agree. Protest, shout, do what you want to do. Uh, go out into the street with your flag on your back uh, and uh, other symbols around your neck or on your wrist, which is quite popular nowadays here in Spain to, to have these symbols on their wrist. You can uh, tell who someone votes for with what they wear on their wrist nowadays. Uh, but uh, throwing eggs, yeah, and uh, so, uh, I think four politicians the other day from the Socialist Party were attacked outside a, a coffee shop uh, after having breakfast at around 10, 10 a.m. probably which is the usual breakfast time here in Spain for a lot of people, 10, 10, 30, 11. Uh, people waiting for them outside and uh, pelted them with eggs and one person hit in the face. And uh, probably not nice to be hit in the face with a with a hard... Well, I mean, it's not a hard-boiled egg, I imagine, but uh, even so, I imagine that getting hit by an egg uh, would, would sting. Uh, another one here from Nick. Hi, Stu. Hi, everyone. Don't forget, Spanish politics is not a football match. You don't have to pick a side. Good schools, hospitals, roads, public transport, job opportunities, etc., etc., is what we need. And those politicians should actually work together to help improve their lives. Rant over. Enjoy the weekend. Yeah, I'm going to give. I'm going to clap uh, Nick for this comment there. Uh, that's what people should be doing in that position, right? Uh, working together and trying to improve the lives of citizens. Exactly. Uh, better schools, better hospitals, better roads, better public transport, and more job opportunities, ETC. Absolutely. And uh, politics is not a football match, although speaking to some people, you would think that it is because they wear their colours. They wear their colours and they take sides. They dig in and take sides against the opposition. But there's uh, a little bit more at play than there is uh, in a football game, as we know. But what can we do? Uh, people become uh, sometimes, I'm reluctant to use the word, but fanatical uh, when it comes to certain things. Football is one, and uh, unfortunately, politics is another. Another one here from Stephen. Hi, Stuart. Just wondering whether you've managed to watch the documentary on Channel 5 with Michael Portillo telling us about his family ties in Spain. Just watched the second one, just watched the second one this week, this week, which featured Malaga and Ronda. Found it very interesting. Well worth a watch. Cheers, mate. Thanks, Stephen, for that. No, I haven't seen it. I don't have access to uh, Channel 5. I could probably go online and uh, take out an account, use a VPN to watch it, but I haven't got around to doing that yet because I've been busy with the uh, with the cricket, which uh, today ended well for Australian supporters. So I haven't had a chance, but I will get around to it, and I'm sure that uh, it'll pop up on YouTube uh, in coming months, if not years. So I'll check it out then. But I'm sure Mr. Portillo, or Mr. Portillo, as his name would be pronounced here in Spain, uh, has an interesting story to tell. And uh, he does it well, in my opinion. The other documentaries that I've seen him do, I think it was riding trains around there for a while. Interesting documentaries. Well worth a look. Thanks, Stephen. One here from Juan. Uh, are you, uh, if you are talking about who plays a sport at all levels versus professional sports, basketball, and tennis are ahead of cricket. Uh, of all the most popular sports in the world, most originated in English-speaking countries. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I think, uh, as I said the other day, uh, the population of India alone and the amount of people that play cricket uh, on a daily basis there at all levels uh, is uh, quite high. Uh, basketball, yeah, popular. Tennis, of course, popular, uh, but are they ahead of cricket? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're more international. I would say that uh, tennis is more international. Basketball, I don't, don't know if that's more international or not, but uh, cricket does have a big audience and a big uh, participation uh, because of the 
Indian influence. But unfortunately, they, they're not happy in India at the moment, I imagine, after uh, today's loss. And the final one here from uh, Rainbow. Watching cricket is a cure for insomnia. Your opinion, not mine, uh, but uh, you're able to express it on this channel. We're an open community. No problems. Now, that's the end of the uh, content for today, the news and the chat. So I'm going to go into the chat, uh, sorry, comments and uh, news. I'm going to go into the chat section now. Before I do, backdrop change time. This one was sent in from Angela and John, who are normally in Menorca, but they traveled to Mallorca. And they took this picture here from a street market, I would say. Looks to be a street market. And we've got a guy there with two massive paellas on the go. And uh, not sure what I can see in that one there, but it looks, um, if it is a paella, it looks like an egg there or something. I don't know whether you have egg and paella. But some nice um, uh, capsicums or red peppers, uh, some eggplants that we can see. I can see a melon. I'm an expert on melons after my trip to the uh, melon capital of Madrid. We've got some uh, other types of peppers down the uh, down the end there as well, and some mushrooms. And uh, perhaps these are some of the ingredients that will go into those paellas. And it looks to be a busy place. So thanks for sending that picture through. And if you've got a similar picture that you would like to see on the backdrop, the email address is this one here, spainspeaks at gmail.com. And also, if you haven't hit the like button yet, please do so. There's the like button. Uh, below the video, you'll find the button to push. So do us a favor and hit the like button. It's always good to see a, a decent like tally if we can get one. We're currently at 67. Uh, you could be like number 68 or maybe 69 if you hit that like button now. So into the chat section, I will go. Let me open it up here. Scroll up to the top. First thing I can see is a super chat from uh, Maurice. Thank you very much for that. 10 pounds. Uh, I'll put this on the screen so we can see it. Thank you very much for the uh, contribution and support of the channel. That's one thing I will put up in a minute is just the uh, thanks to uh, people that uh, have supported the channel, whether it's like Morris here with the super thanks or super chat, buying me a coffee um, or the, uh, I'll just lower this, or the uh, longer term supporters on Patreon. Thank you very much. Links in the description below. Thanks, Morris, for that. Andrew coming in also from uh, southeast London. Wet and windy there still. I think it was wet and windy the other day. Wet and windy still. Hoping we're well. Thanks, uh, Andrew. I'm well, and I, I can't speak on behalf of everyone, but uh, today I'm not bad. Erica coming in from a 14 degrees Celsius terrassa in Catalonia. The This year, the total amount of rain is around, th is that th 31 centimetres uh, cubed, is it? Uh, the last similar figure was in 1850, beating our own record. Hope everyone is enjoying their Sunday with a nice glass of maybe one of those wines that we saw before. Thanks, Erica, for that. Liz coming in from Sevilla down there in Andalusia, uh, one of the main cities in that autonomous community. Don't tell the Malagueños, but uh, in my opinion it is. Jonathan coming in also from Uruguay, as we can see here again. Good to see you, uh, John. Ross coming in from Valencia. Uh, no weather update, uh, Ross, today. Uh, but I imagine it's good. Sunny down there in uh, Alicante, Playa Flamenca, I think. Stephen coming in from a milder North London, 15 degrees Celsius there. Uh, but it has been raining and windy. Would rather be tuning in from the old tower. I see the weather is still decent in most of Spain. It is currently, Stephen, but... Uh, it's a changing this week, uh, unfortunately for people that uh, like this type of weather. The colder weather is just around the corner. I think Tuesday, Wednesday, temperatures are going to drop. St uh, High Flyer John coming in uh, also from the UK. Stephen, we saw a comment from Stephen before. Uh, send me some sunshine. Yeah, not much to send uh, after uh, Tuesday. Maybe it, uh, you'll get some uh, decent weather your way. Not sure. Uh, keep up the good way. Uh, keep, keep up the good work, mate. Thank you very much, Stephen, for that. Good to see you in the chat. Amanda saying hello from Shropshire, also in the UK. One, two, three, Sean away, also in the chat. We saw uh, a comment from uh, one, two, three before also about the uh, throwing of eggs at politicians. Thanks uh, for that. 
what else? Let's have a look. Paul coming in also. Paul Girard coming in here. Evening to us all. Barbara from uh, slightly bit cooler today. There. Jacques coming in from Johannesburg. Uh, yeah, another uh, uh, team that the Aussies um, uh, uh, beat on the way to winning the final, South Africa. Not sure if Jacques is a uh, cricket fan or not. Maybe a rugby fan. Don't know. Uh, Pamela, hello from is it San Juan de los Terrenos. Not sure. Oxford is where Jan uh, Janet's located. Good to see you, Janet. Stan coming in from snowy Poland. Cold there and snowy. Lorcan coming in from Ireland. Good to see you. Haven't seen you before. Heidi coming in from Madrid. Hoping everyone is having a good Sunday. Pamela, Pamela, San Juan de los Terreros. Yes, that's what I thought it was. Uh, Harriet, looks like an awful lot of people at the protest, and rightly so. Yeah, like we, like I said before, Harriet, uh, no exact figure. Of course, it's very difficult to know exactly how many people are uh, uh, in attendance at these events. There's nobody there with a, you know, with a clicker, you know, <laughs> trying to work out how many people are there. But uh, the government delegation, 170 or 160, we saw before uh, around there, and the uh, organisers uh, closer to the million mark. So there's a big difference, but uh, a lot of people not happy, uh, Harriet. And we saw um, all of the different groups of uh, people that are uh, expressing their, um, what's the word, their, um, uh, their uh, rejection of this new amnesty. Uh, many coming in from Persia, Iran. Uh, Jimbo, I already changed the uh, logo there. I uh, don't know what that means exactly, the comment. So <laughs> don't know what language it is. Uh, Gerard uh, or Jared coming in from Palma, Mallorca, traveling to Sydney on Friday, but will be following me from down under. Good luck to you, Jared. Uh, yeah, haven't been uh, back there for a long time. I've been to Sydney for decades. I've been, been to Australia for four years. So uh, good to see you heading down that way, even though it's a long way from where I originate from. Joe coming in. Uh, I miss you. Thanks, Joe, for that. Haven't seen you for a while either. What do we got here? Uh, the military are in love with Asonadas, or military coups. 23rd of February 1981 was the last one. We don't need <laughs> their help. They can vote Vox and feel happy. I'm sure they do, Erica. I'm sure they do, but they like to still um, uh, show that they have some weight in society, as we know that back in the uh, 1950s, 60s, and 70s, they ruled the roost, right? Not anymore. Heidi agrees. Marques de Cáceres is a decent drop. I think the Criantha is a decent drop. You can get better uh, quality with the Reserva, Grand Reserva, etc. But for the price, quite good. Marques de Cáceres is lovely, but about 24 a bottle. Maybe that's the uh, the uh, Reserva. Maybe not the Criantha. The Criantha here is around seven fifty, seven sixty, uh, give or take a few uh, cents on either side. So I don't know whether there'd be um, what's that a nearly a, a three times markup? Don't know. Don't think so. Maybe it's the risk. Just check uh, if you can. Well, here we go. I find out what uh, Jimbo actually meant to say before. Australia won the cricket World Cup by uh, six. Champions, go as he go. There we go. Regular sports correspondent is Jimbo. Madrid correspondent uh, for, a, for, a, for a little while yet, a couple of weeks. Uh, Dave, uh, hope you had an enjoyable weekend. I did, Dave. Thanks for that. Did some interesting things over the weekend. Jonathan drank a um, white wine in Murcia from the, what's that, Macabeo grape? I never had it before. Very nice wine with seafood or chicken or even pork. There we go. Yeah, it's good to um, get a, 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 a nice wine that you haven't tried before, right? Uh, changing the 90-day rule only applies to homeowners here or in France. Has it been changed or are they trying to? I think they're trying to do it. Yeah, homeowners, that's right. I think we mentioned that the other day. Or uh, people that in the future could buy a home probably also, right? Uh, Flutter Girl coming in from uh, Toronto. Congrats on winning the World Cup. Thanks, uh, Flutter Girl, for that. Andrew, doesn't matter to Sanchez. You can be a major member of the PSOE or you 
even if you are a convicted criminal. There we go. What else? Ted's asking for likes. Uh, Julie in the common as well. We'll be over for Christmas. We'll look out for the wine that was suggested before. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think those were three fairly common supermarket wines. And uh, one of the things when you go to a, uh, if you go to Mercadona, there's not much choice when it comes to uh, wine. But if you go to a big supermarket like an Al Campo or a a Carrefour, uh, one of these uh, big uh, hypermarkets, they're called here, supermarket, uh, the the you can get lost trying to find a, a decent bottle, and it can be hit and miss. But the three pointed out there, I think, would be a good place to start. Sunny coming in from uh, Basingstoke. Uh, hope you had a lovely weekend. Thanks for that, Sunny. Uh, Larry, a very good uh, vino tinto. Dessa vino de pago from La Mancha. Very strong, about fifteen percent. Haven't seen that one, Larry. I'll, I'll look for it. Dave, coming in from the sunny Bulgarian mountains, less than four weeks before returning to Barcelona for Catalan Christmas. There we go. Dave's on his way back, currently in Bulgaria. Roland coming in from Minneapolis in the States. Uh, Portillo is already on YouTube. Well worth the watch. Jack went up quickly. Already on YouTube. Thanks, Brian, for pointing that out. I'll, 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 I'll look for it. Justino, or Justino, coming in from Dubai. Thanks uh, for watching today. Alan, regular viewer, coming in, uh, catching the live stream again. Hope you're well. And uh, Mia, who I haven't mentioned for a while. She's just over here uh, having a siesta, uh, Alan, while uh, while I speak. She um, was a bit stirred up uh, 20 minutes ago when she heard some noise outside, but she's calmed down. Uh, give us a big broad smile for Australia winning. Now I like to uh, keep my emotions under control here, uh, Paul. Maybe I did a, um, a uh, uh, gave myself a, a high five at around uh, five o'clock this afternoon, but uh, keep it under keep it under wraps. Gigi coming in also from Northern California, sunny again there. Good to see you, Gigi. Andrew, what's Andrew saying about the amnesty? It just demonstrates how crooked governments and politicians are. Uh, one law for publicans, uh, their own rule. Is that publicans, is it? Their own rule for them. It uh, stinks. Yeah, it's all about uh, getting into power, right? Ah, uh, no. The reserve is close to 30. That's a big markup, uh, one, two, three. Big markup. More rugby is uh, Jack's thought so. Cricket is like a yo-yo, more at the bottom than on top. Yeah, South Africa normally puts up um, puts up a contest at least. Uh, rugby, of course, is a different story. World champions, if I remember correctly. Uh, in response to the comment that said cricket cures insomnia, he needs to see a cricketer like the late Shane Warne take three wickets in quick succession. Succession, fun times. Yes, Shane Warne. He knew how to spin it right. Iggy coming in from uh, a relatively warm Hayen. Gorgeous day down there. Hope it uh, continues that way. Just got like number 100. There we go. I can see it there. 101 currently. So Alan was like number 100. And um, four episodes apparently of the uh, Portillo documentary on YouTube already. So uh, we'll check that out. Uh, I'm sure uh, interested in seeing the uh, documentary uh, most documentaries that this guy puts out, I will say that you do get some uh, interesting documentaries being produced out of the United Kingdom. You do indeed. All right, now that's uh, all of the uh, chat, 28, 29 minute mark. So that's enough for me today. I'll be back again tomorrow with some uh, more news. Hopefully the tanks haven't started rolling down the streets. We'll uh, keep our fingers crossed for that. Uh, Only joking, of course. And... um, uh, like I said, I'll see you guys tomorrow with uh, another live stream. Hasta luego, hasta entonces. Uh, bye-bye. Thanks for watching.